Well, welcome, everyone. Um, I'm Margot Cullen uh, from Ohio Northern University, a cultural studies person who also does some screenwriting. And I'm really pleased to be here today. Um, we see that we have uh, our guest here. We have a, a guest that we, one person, Crystal Diane Stevens, is not here today. And I will be playing her role. Right. <laughs> <laughs> introduce yourself. The other introductions are on the back, taken from the website and also from IMBD. Um, because we only have the 30 minutes, I didn't want to go into lengthy introductions, so you can take a look there. I'm um, sure. But David, our someone who's just here. So why don't you just uh, tell your name and a little bit about your background? Okay. Uh, my name is Gabriel Diani. I'm crashing uh, the party today. Uh, I didn't know I was going to be able to come until very recently, so they're very nice to have me to the panel. I have a film called The Selling that's here at the festival tonight. It's the, uh, the midnight uh, free screening. And uh, it's a comedy about a real estate agent trying to sell a haunted house. <laughs> wow. That's, that's awesome. Thanks. That's what I'm looking forward to seeing you. So that's me. Uh, do you guys want to say your name so these people well, yeah, know who yeah, yeah, cor yeah. correspond to you? I'm Glenn Burgetts. I'm Andy Redline. I'm Greg Pitts, local guy, born and raised right here in Lima, Ohio. <laughs> no, it's uh, the 2.16, so we're going to run a little bit past the hour. Um, Len had asked if we set it up into two segments, and the first part would I would be asking questions of the panel for 30 minutes, and each has a chance to respond. And then the other 30 minutes would be open. Now, I didn't know what the, how large the group would be, and sometimes we use cards in these situations, but you all seem so cool and relaxed and casual. I think we'll just take questions from the floor then. I would like you to address your questions to the whole panel, if at all possible, though, to give everybody an opportunity to respond. And then you could possibly meet with people one-on-one -on -one if you want to know some particulars of that. So it's spec script, and you can describe that process? Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. we're good about that. Um, yeah, you work on spec script. Well, yeah, yeah basically yeah. anything that you write for free is a it's spec, spec script. <laughs> <laughs> so the movie that, uh, that I have screening here was a spec script. But yeah. I, you know, I, we had always planned to produce it um, ourselves. And that's basically what it is. It's a writing sample to try to get an agent or to, um, to send around to try to make a sale. Um, try to get an actor attached. Try to get an actor attached. The difference would be a, a, a work made for hire, which is someone hires you to write a script, and you don't own any of it. Um, the spec script uh, is something that you own. Yeah, which is nice. I like, you know, as a creative producer, I like having um, creative control over what I write um, <laughs> because I wrote it, and I'm proud of it, and I want it to turn out the way I want it to turn out. Um, yeah, you're working. Exactly. My partner, Stormwood, um, and I, he's the director of, of No My Dead, Turned Out Covered, um, he, you know, he and I work very well together, and it's very, it's this, it, it, it's very fluid and easy, and, and, and we like the way we do things. Now, does that mean that I wouldn't sell a script, a sex, uh, spec script of mine, and, and just say, here you go, and, and I need a check? Yeah, I do that. <laughs> but, um, but let's see, I mean, I have, you asked the process of it, I have a ton of little, um, uh, I post-it notes, um, and my kids are here to tell you, all over my office, which is ideas. Things I just think of, and oh, that's funny, and I write it down, or just a, a quip or a line that I come up with, and or the kids say something, or my friend says something on the phone, and I mean I have this wall of stuff, and about once a month I pull it all down and I put it in a box, and about once a year I go through the box and I look and I go, oh that's funny, yeah, oh I should write that, that's really funny. Um, so that's how you know. Um, so I finished one script, um, I'm in the middle of another one, and I'm in. So I try to get at least two, two done a year. Oh, two a year. Two a year. Yeah. I mean, I have four children, and they have a busy life. And <laughs> my life's kind of hectic, and, and um, I'm also, you know, pimping a movie. So, <laughs> so yeah, I'd, hope to, I'd, I'd like to be at the point where I'm just writing, but I don't, I don't think that's gonna, I don't think that's ever gonna happen. So that gets into the question of the second one's practical tips, maybe for people that are wanting to be screenwriters, want to be better screenwriters. So one of the things you do is you just you keep track all the time, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah. so you have post-it notes. I do. I, I write. I have a set time. Um, usually, well, when the kids go to school, usually when they get on the bus, um, I start writing. I usually, well, I usually go work out and then kind of get that part of my brain so I'm not fancy and fidgety. And then I write usually from about 9 a.m. to about noon. And then sometimes it spills over, but usually 9 a.m. to noon is when I'm doing everything. And I, of course, I stop and you know blow the laundry and switch it out and all that. 
pace. You have good pacing time, you know, or nail chewing time. Procrastination is a great way to It really is. It's fantastic, yeah. I also set deadlines for myself that are arbitrary, that don't mean anything to anybody but me. Let's see if I can, you know, make it. Usually, usually I make them. <laughs> the biggest obstacle I see most screenwriters facing is the assumption that it takes a year or more to write a script. And right, I've had many sense. people come to me, say, hey, I have this idea for a script, and my buddy and I want to make this film, and we're starting to plan it out. Now we need to set aside like a year or so to write the script, right? right. So, no, set aside a week or two right. to write the script. I, uh, not with all of my films, but I mean, my films today is hard, the worst movie ever. Uh, I wrote in three and four days. And I just get these ideas, I jot down some notes, these are the characters I want in it, these are the plot twists, do that for a couple of days, and I just sit down, and for three or four days I just type. I'm looking at my notes, typing. And I have to do a lot of revision after that, but after three or four days, I have a completed script that I can start working on, I can start casting characters, I can start bringing my crew in, and then over the next few weeks as I'm putting together the shoot, I'm revising. You know, changing some dialogue, maybe taking a character out, adding a little something in. And typically for me, uh, my first draft is shorter than the final draft. I know a lot of people have to take things out, but I start thinking, oh wow, I want this character to do this, and I'll add in a whole other scene, or I'll extend a scene out because I think of some dialogue that would be appropriate to the characters. But yeah, I would absolutely tell screenwriters, you know, obviously our schedules right. vary, yeah. okay? As a single guy living in a studio apartment, working as a part-time professor, I had more time to write than most people. But, yeah, you don't have to set aside a year. Set aside two weeks or a month or six weeks and say, okay, I'm just going to get this done. That's all there is to it. I'm going to find the mornings, evenings, wherever, where I'm going to write for three or four or five hours a day and get this script done. And just write. Write every day. I write something every day. Even if it's a well-crafted status update on my Facebook page, I write something every day. Every day, every day, every day. Yeah, I'm a Twitter author. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but Twitter's great because you have to live it yourself and you have to say something. You have to say something meaningful, and you have a very, you know, 140 characters to figure that out. You'd be and amazed how, how in, in, in the amount of time I write short scripts, and the script that um, I wrote for at Karma the movie that my son executive produced is 22 minutes long. It has no dialogue at all, but I was still was able to um, write the script in a record amount of time. It took me under. Uh, it didn't take me long at all. It's just. Deciding the character, my, I wanted to cast another character, and my son insisted that I play the character. You know, so we went back and forth with that. But uh, yeah, so you can what write short some, script too. What's some of your writing tips? What do you think works for you? Um, for me, it's things that that I think of, just like stories, things that I've experienced uh -huh. in, in my personal life, and then I then I build from there. You know, it can be an instance to where if I go to um, Godiva chocolate and I'm getting some because I, I love chocolate. <laughs> so if I'm getting some chocolate and you know maybe the, the the person who's taking care of me they're having a bad day or all these variables and, and I'll sit and I'll, I'll write down experience I'll go um, I was here this time this date this occurred and then I'll build it from there. Is everybody the other two panelists David Greg do you keep notes? All the time. Or Greg and Glasser. Oh, uh, other. Uh, <laughs> Do you guys keep notes, notebooks, journals? Uh, yeah, I, I used to. Not so much anymore. Like, I'll have an idea and I'll open up a, a text edit file on my computer and start write, making notes there, and then I'll, I'll pull that up when I'm working on that. But sometimes I'll crack open the notebook and, and write. But for me, it's all about structure, and uh, that's really the hard part. Anyone can write dialogue. Um, but uh, for me, what's the hardest part is cracking that three-act structure. Uh, for a feature length screenplay. With the short film, um, you probably don't have to worry about it as much. I've done some short films and you just have an idea and you try to form that idea. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what I do. And, right. um, and when I sat down to write, and I had done some short films, and I sat down to write a uh, feature film, it was like, it was a whole other world. <laughs> um, there's a book called uh, Save the Cat, oh, which yeah. is a great structure book. Um, it's what I used. Um, it's called The Last Screenwriting uh, Book You'll Ever Need. There are two sequels to it. He did pass away. He did pass away. Who wrote the sequels? Well, no, he, he wrote them before the before. Oh, okay. okay. Um, but it's really great for uh, for cracking that story. And, and uh, you know, your initial reaction could be like, "Well, this is a formula, and my movie's not going to be 
formulaic, but if you look at all movies, even all movies, movies that are, are that are groundbreaking, they all have a three act structure and they all have these beats. And then once you once you read the beach, like, oh my gosh, you, it's everywhere, and it like opens up a whole new world for you. When I was working on my screenplay. I read that book, I guess maybe into the ninth or tenth draft of it, and it was like, <laughs> oh, I moved this here, this here, this here, and then uh, the structure works. Um, so that's really the hardest part for me is, is cracking the structure, figuring it out, and then set, and then writing ten pages a day for ten days, and then at the end of ten days I have a 110 page script. That's terrible, and then, you know, <laughs> sit on it for a while. Right. Glenn, how do you work with structure? What do you think? Uh, well, first off, like that, I, I don't keep a journal or anything. Oh, that's right. and, uh, what will typically happen is I'll get an idea for a film. Uh, for example, with To Die Is Hard, we shot a sketch comedy show four and a half years ago. It's still not edited. And, uh, but one of, the, one of the many editors who's had it said, hey, that one sketch was a riot. You should write a film around it. And uh, so I just jotted down notes for a couple days, expanded on that idea, and came up with the script. And I have, maybe I'm a rube, I don't know. Uh, I've never even thought about the three-act thing arcs, anything. I just I just start telling the story. And it's like, what do I have to do to keep the story going? Keep it interesting. And that's all I'm ever thinking about. What would be the, is something interesting to happen next? And while I'm thinking of it, before I forget, for those of you who are wanting to write scripts and you know make a living hopefully doing that or making films, I would highly suggest, it's been my experience talking with film industry people, don't do dramas. Okay, because there are a billion dramas out there. Everyone wants to make their mark, you know, doing the next Gone with the Wind or The Godfather or whatever. And unless you have a name attached to it, I've had so many distributors tell me, we're not interested. You might have the greatest drama ever made, but unless you have at least a couple B-list stars, if not an A-list star in there, no one overseas wants to buy. DVD distributors aren't really that interested in it. Do comedies or horror films? That's why I hear all the time from distributors, because no one really cares if, I mean, it does help if you have Adam Sandler in your film, yes, but if a film's funny, it's funny, and people watch it. If a film's scary, it's scary, and people watch it. They don't care if there's an A-list star in there. Well, Visual-based humor plays around the world a lot. Sometimes um, humor doesn't translate to, to different, different cultures, because different cultures find different things yeah. funny. So, like, um, your movie sounds like it's very visually based, the, the Die Hard parody. Yeah. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, everyone understands that, because Die Hard is a huge hit around the world. And, like, uh, Rowan Atkinson, all of his, like, the Johnny English movie was a huge bomb here, but it did so well internationally that they made a terrible sequel to it. <laughs> um, and that's, uh, and so, yeah, comedy can sell if it's visually based or if it's, um, but if it's, like, uh, Clerks or something has, like, a lot of pop cultural references or, uh, like, Napoleon.